Alrighty guys, we are gonna go ahead and read a little bit in this lesson two. We're not gonna read the entire thing today, so I do want you to pay attention to um, which sections we're going to be reading and which sections we're gonna be filling out in our outline notes. So you'll notice that this purple square, this is what we are going to read. So I would like you to highlight that description and explanation in green, please. And then we're gonna scroll through this for now, and then we are going to highlight this scientific tools in blue. And then we're gonna come down here and tools used by earth scientists. Let's go ahead and highlight that orange. Then we could come down and we would see then our words for this section that we are going to do for our vocab. Remember, we are going to write or type these words in our vocab um, assignment, and then you can go out to Google and find an image, or you can draw uh, your own image, okay? So let's scroll back up to the top here into our section here um, about explanation and description and explanation. Before we go, I want us to set up our outline notes as well. All right, so this little section here, description and explanation, I need you to highlight green. And that's gonna correspond to the section in our reading essentials, right? So that we'll fill in. So then scroll, Oop, there it is. We're gonna highlight scientific tools in blue and then tools used by earth scientists in orange, similar to what we marked our reading essentials in. And if you scroll a little bit further, you can put a purple line there. That shows we are at the end of the section that we're going to do. All right, so orange, blue, and green. All right, so we're gonna stop at the end of each of those sections and fill in our outline notes, all right? Ready to go, guys? Here we go. All right, so our chapter text here. Imagine that a scientist is observing an erupting volcano. He describes in his journal that the flowing lava is bright red with a black crust and has a temperature of about 630 degrees Celsius. So here is a vocab word. I know it's a vocab word because it is bolded and it has italics. So go ahead and switch your highlighter to yellow and let's highlight that vocab word. A description is a spoken or written summary of observations. There are two types of descriptions, qualitative and quantitative, all right? So this is what we did when we, we did um, our gumdrop lab and when we did that uh, notes page with the ice cream sundae. So think back to that. So a qualitative description, such as bright red, uses senses, sight, sound, smell, touch, taste, to describe an observation. So make sure that you get that highlighted. A quantitative observation, such as 630 degrees Celsius, uses numbers and measurements. So you're gonna find on your study guide that the definition for both of these words appears on the back page of page one, so page two. Um, so this is where you would find those definitions, okay? So later the scientist might explain his observation. An explanation is an interpretation of observations. So there's a vocab word. So let's go ahead and get that highlighted in yellow. Because the lava was bright red, that would be qualitative, and about 630 degrees Celsius, that would be quantitative. The scientist might explain the lava is cooling off and the volcano did not erupt recently. All right, so we're at the end of this section. So we are gonna to go to our outline notes and fill in just what we did for description and explanation. So a spoken or written summary of observations is known as a description. A qualitative description is one in which the senses are used to describe an observation. So what does it look like? What does it smell like? What does it feel like? What does it taste like? What does it sound like? 
an qua um, a quantitative observation is one that is based, which is numbers and measurements are used in an observation. So what is the temperature? What is the length? Is it six meters? Is it 630 degrees Celsius? It is, is it 50 grams? So something that you have measured. An interpretation of observations is called an explanation. So if you need to pause and get this filled in, please do so. So let's go ahead. We see now that we are going to be going to scientific tools. So we're gonna go back into our reading essential here. We're gonna scroll all the way down past this. We're not doing this section and we're gonna come down here to scientific tools. As you engage in scientific inquiry, you will need tools to help you take quantitative measurements. Always follow appropriate safety procedures when using scientific tools. So the first one is a science journal. Use a science journal to record observations, questions, hypotheses, data, and conclusions from your scientific investigations. A science journal is any notebook that you can use to take notes or record information and data while you conduct a in scientific investigation. Keep your journal organized so you can find information easily. Write the date whenever you record new information in the journal. Make sure you are recording your data honestly and accurately. So whether this is a paper journal, like a um, spiral notebook or a paper just in the binder, or whether that be a Word document on the computer, but just some place that you are recording your findings and you have to record it honestly and accurately. So the second one we have is a ruler and a meter stick. So we use rulers and meter sticks to measure lengths and distances. The SI unit of measurement for length is the meter. So rulers and meter sticks measure in meters. Now, we here in the United States, the US customary, we've got inches and feet and yards and miles. But in the metric system, it's all based on a meter. For small objects such as pebbles or seeds, use a metric ruler with centimeters and millimeters markings. To measure larger objects such as the length of your bedroom, use a meter stick. So a meter stick is just a little, um, a little bit longer than three feet, okay? So it's a little bit longer than a yard, like 39 inches, whereas a yard is 36 inches, just for reference there. Um, it's important for you to know the prefix kilo is means a thousand. So you've heard the term kilometers, right? Kilometers, how many kilometers is that? That's 10 kilometers. So that would be a thousand meters is one kilometer. So 1,000 meters equals one kilometer. All righty, so that is rulers and meter sticks. So uh, we just have to be careful when you're carrying those um, and never point them at anyone. They are not lightsabers, right? Okay, glassware. Some use beakers to hold and pour liquids. The lines on a beaker do not provide accurate measurements, so you should use a graduated cylinder to measure the volume of a liquid. Liquid volume is typically measured in liters or milliliters. So you probably have the point of reference for a two liter, two liter soda, right? So that is uh, 2,000 milliliters. If you think back to when we did the Mentos lab, uh, when we wrote down that the Diet Coke was a two liter, we also wrote down that it was 2,000 milliliters. All right, triple beam balance is gonna be grams. Use a triple beam balance to measure the mass of an object. The mass of an object is measured in grams. The mass of larger objects is usually measured in kilograms. So mass is the amount of matter in an object, so the amount of stuff in that object. It is not the same as weight. Weight is dependent on gravity, but the mass doesn't change regardless of where you are in this universe. 
We'll talk about more a little bit more about that when we talk about space. That the mass of that in, of that astronaut is the same regardless if they're on the space station or whether they are on Earth. But their weight is going to be different based on the gravitational pull. So when we are using the triple beam balance, we are measuring the mass of that object. Triple beam balances are instruments that require some care during use. Follow your teacher's instructions so that you do not damage the instrument. Okay. All right, thermometers. I uh, use the thermometer to measure the temperature of, an, of a substance. Although Kelvin is the SI unit for temperature, you will use the thermometer to measure temperatures in degrees Celsius. So to use a thermometer, place a room temperature thermometer into the substance for which you want to measure the temperature. Do not let the thermometer touch the bottom of the container that holds the substance you are or you will get an inaccurate reading. When you finish, remember to place your thermometer in a secure place. Do not lay it on a table because it can roll off the table. Never use a thermometer as a stirring rod. Then our last one in this section is computers and internet. Use a computer to collect, organize, and store information about a research topic or scientific investigation. Computers are useful tools for scientists for several reasons. Scientists use computers to record and analyze data and to research new information. They can also quickly share their results with other world, oh, worldwide over the internet. Okay, so. Make sure that you have all of this uh, marked and highlighted. That's gonna be helpful for you when you go to do your assignment that you are turning in for me, okay? All right, so then let's go to our outline notes. And then we have this section on scientific tools. A notebook that you use to take notes or record information and data while you conduct, conduct a scientific investigation is called a science journal. Making measurements of length and distance is commonly done with rulers and meter sticks using base units of meters. And the metric um, symbol for that would be a lowercase m. To measure the volume of a liquid, use a graduated cylinder um, and units of liters or milliliters. So the SI unit for that would be or the abbreviation for that would be an L, and then a for a milliliter, which is a thousand, a one thousandth of a liter, or one thousand milliliters are in a liter, that would be an ML. To measure the mass of an object, use a triple beam balance and units of grams, uh, lowercase g, or kilograms, kg, kilo meaning thousand. So a thousand grams would be a kilogram. To measure the temperature of a substance, use a thermometer and units of degrees Celsius. Computers are useful for collecting, organizing, storing, analyzing data, and ultimately sharing results worldwide over the internet. So make sure that your outline notes are filled out for this section. Stop this video if you need to. We have one little section left on tools used by earth science scientists, and then we're finished. Okay, all right, tools used by earth scientists. Binoculars, um, have you ever used binoculars before? They're kind of fun to do. They um, enable you to see far away objects more clearly. So it's, it brings a safety thing in, because uh, if you are trying to observe a bear, for example, or a lion, for example, you're not gonna wanna get real close, right? So you're going to observe them using uh, binoculars, or if we've got birds up in the tree, all right? Okay, a compass. That's gonna show direction there, showing the magnetic north. You're gonna be able to use that to navigate if you are out in the field and to determine the direction that something is. A wind vane, an anometer, an anometer. A wind vane is a device. It is attached to the roof of a building that rotates to show the direction of the wind. Sometimes they'll be um, on the top of a barn. I mean, it might even look like a barn, or sometimes it looks like a rooster, or you know, something with a an arrow that's going to spin and show the direction um, of that wind. But the measurement of it, um, an anemometer or speed 
wind speed gauge is to is used to measure the wind and the force of the wind. So if you're wanting to actually get a quantitative, so you're wanting it to be 75 miles per hour or kilometers per second or whatever it is you are measuring, you're going to need to use an anemometer. But if you're just wanting to see which direction the wind is blowing, um, or if the wind is blowing at all, then you could just simply look at a uh, wind vane, but a wind vane does not give you any type of measurement. A streak plate. A streak plate is a piece of hard, unglazed porcelain that helps you identify minerals. When you scrape a mineral along a streak plate, the mineral leaves behind powdery marks. The color of the mark is the mineral's streak. Alrighty, so there are the four words that you are going to need to add to your vocab assignment. Description, explanation, SI, um, and significant digits. Alrighty, so let's go and fill out that last little section in our notebook. So, Earth scientists use binoculars to get a closer look at faraway objects such as landforms animals, weather. Earth scientists use a compass to navigate and to determine the direction of objects. Wind direction is measured by um, a wind vane, so the direction of it, but is the wind speed with a calculation would be an anemometer. To help identify minerals, people use a piece of unglazed porcelain such uh, called a streak plate. The color of the mark left is called the minerals streak. So porcelain, what you might think of porcelain, um, so look at the inside of your sink or your sink in your bathroom, that might be porcelain or um, now that would be glazed, not unglazed. Um, Think about maybe a coffee cup that might be in um, your pantry or your cabinet. That might be porcelain, okay? Alrighty, so make sure that you have all this filled out because there is an assignment that you are going to be doing and these notes and outline notes are gonna be super helpful for you, all right? 